So we are working on the algebra of functions. In the last video, I worked a couple of examples for you. Um, I defined f and g, and I found f plus g of 4, and f times g of negative 1. I also introduced a few more examples for you. f of g equals x squared minus 3, and g of x equals square root of x minus 7. And then I suggested that you do all five of these parts on your own and see if you come up with the right answer. So hopefully you have worked them at this point. If not, pause the video and see how far you can get. Okay, in part A, f times g of 7, I'm going to do exactly what we did in the last example. I'm going to figure out what f of 7 is, which is 7 squared minus 3, or 49 minus 3, which gives me 46. I'm going to figure out what g of 7 is, which is square root of 7 minus 7, or square root of 0, which simplifies to be 0. So then f times g of 7 is the same thing as f of 7 times g of 7. So we just substitute in the numbers that we come up with. f of 7 is 46 times g of 7 gives me 0. 46 times 0 gives me 0. So this is the answer of f times g of 7. So if it asks you for an operation evaluated at a specific number, the easier way to do it is to plug that number into the respective functions first and then actually apply whatever operation we're trying to do, in this case the multiplication. Okay. The rest of the parts do not have a number substituted in. We just need to figure out f plus g, g minus f, and yada, yada, yada. So the first thing that we want to do in part b is f plus g of x. Well, we know that that's the same thing as f of x plus g of x. So we just need to take our f of x function, which is x squared minus 3, and add it to our g of x function, which is square root of x minus 7. Now notice I substituted these in in parentheses. My f of x was in parentheses and my g of x was in parentheses. In this problem, in this part b, it will not matter if I left off the parentheses because this is addition, meaning the parentheses aren't affected by my addition. But in the other parts, it most likely will be. So I suggest that you always substitute these in in parentheses, and then if you don't need them, you can go ahead and get rid of them, just like we're going to do in this problem. So to simplify this, I can drop my parentheses and combine any like terms if I have any, which I don't, because I have x squared, I have minus 3, and then I have a square root. And I know that I cannot combine square roots unless they are like terms, which I do not have here. So I cannot actually simplify this any at all. So my most simplified version of this f plus g of x is this x squared minus 3 plus the square root of x minus 7. Now, you might rearrange the order of it depending on what preference you're looking for, but I think at this point that's okay. Now, something else that this specifically asked for was the domain. Now, we just learned domain in the last section, and we know that domain is any x values that we can substitute in for my function, and it makes sense. So we know that we have a couple of cautions to be worried about here. Number one, if there is a fraction, we should not have zero in the denominator. Number two, if there is a square root, we should not be taking square roots of negative number. I also warned you about word applications, if it's an applied problem. And then I kind of left you up in the air saying anything else could be a caution when you're thinking about domain. So don't just focus on those first three aspects but focus on anything that makes the problem go crazy. In this instance, we don't have any denominators, we obviously don't have any word applications, but we do have a square root involved. So we know that this square root has to end up to be positive. 
So the way that we solve domain for this problem is we know the in front of our square root, specifically x minus 7, has to be positive. The way we represent that is it has to be larger than or equal to 0. So if I just solve this by isolating my variable and moving my 7 to the other side, I know that x has to be larger than or equal to 7. Now, I can put that in whatever notation you like, set builder notation, since I already have the inequality laid out, or you can put it in interval notation. So in interval notation, my domain for part b is 7 and anything larger than 7. I can include 7, which is why I have a bracket on the left, and infinity always has a curved parenthesis on the right. So here's my domain for part b. Okay, part C, same process. G minus f of x is g of x minus f of x. So my g of x is the square root of x minus 7 minus my f of x is x squared minus 3. Notice I substituted them both in with parentheses. It does matter in this problem because this is a subtraction. So this subtraction really needs to go to everything in my second parentheses. So the easier way to do that is to distribute this negative. So that gives me square root of x minus 7 minus x squared plus 3. And again, order can be probably anything here. I'm not going to be too picky about order on problems like this. So there is my g minus f of x. My domain, I worry about the same cautions. I don't have any denominator. I don't have any word application, but I do have square roots. So I need to look at the inside of the square root, and I know it has to be positive. It's going to be the exact same process that I did back here in part B. So my domain is going to be the exact same answer. My domain is anything equal to or larger than 7. That will make things inside my root positive, and that will give me real numbers for this domain here. Okay, part D, f divided by g of x. So that gives me f of x divided by g of x. So on the top, I have x squared minus 3 divided by, on the bottom, square root of x minus 3. Now, I substituted these in with parentheses. This is one of the problems that it would not have affected you if you would have left the parentheses off. So just dropping those parentheses, f divided by g of x is x squared minus 3 over square root of x minus 7. Now, the domain. So the first thing is I again have the square root of x minus 7. So that tells me x has to be bigger than or equal to 7. The other thing that we have to worry about here is notice we have a denominator in this problem. So we know that our denominator cannot be equal to 0. So typically for our domain under the square root, we would take this x minus 7 and set it larger than or equal to 0. But since it's in the denominator, I know that it cannot be or equal to. So I need to get rid of that part. If I move my 7 to the other side by adding it, that gives me x is larger than 7. So my domain is almost the same as part b and c, but it has to be strictly larger than 7, not including it, because I have to worry about dividing by 0. Okay, part e. I want to take f of x times f of x. So this example is to show you when you do the algebra functions, you don't have to necessarily do it with two separate functions. You can do it with two identical functions. Well, I just substitute in what I have. My f of x is x squared minus 3 times my f of x, which is x squared minus 3. So to simplify this, I just need to FOIL it. First, x squared times x squared gives me x to the fourth. Outside gives me a negative 3x squared. Inside gives me a negative 3x squared, so combining those together gives me a negative 6x squared. And last, negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. 
So this is the simplified version of f times f of x. My domain then, I worry about my cautions. I have no denominator. I have no square root. I have no word application. In fact, this function is a polynomial function. Polynomial functions are defined everywhere. So I don't have any cautions in this problem at all. So if I wanted to list this in interval notation, my domain is every number that I can think of, meaning from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Okay, so I have finished all these examples here. In the next video, I have one more example of the algebra functions, meaning combining functions using your simple math operations. But the example is going to be a word application. How would these examples here fit into an everyday life type of problem? And so that's what we're going to talk about next.